Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be talking about Microsoft Shifts again. So let's get into it. Okay, so we have taken a break, but we are finally back and ready to talk to you guys about Microsoft products. So today I'm going to be talking about a highly requested topic by many of you guys, which is Microsoft Shifts. So Shifts is what we use to track our employees' schedules and time. So they request time off as well as put in their hours for the work days on this. Um, this is inside Microsoft Teams. So if you do not use Microsoft Teams, uh, good luck trying to use this. So make sure that you know what Microsoft Teams is and you have your company on that before you're looking into this video. Um, I do have videos that I'll link above about Microsoft Teams. So if you need to know more about that, you can click on the links before. Also, we have many other videos about Microsoft Shifts that I'm also going to link um, in the description so that you can take a look on all of the other things that we've already covered about Microsoft Shifts. But today I am going to keep it simple and talk about what I've learned since using it for about over uh, a year and a half now. So um, without further ado, let me share my screen and let's get into it. Now, before you jump into any of this and you're setting up a Microsoft Shifts um, schedule is what they call it. So how do you set up a schedule? Well, the answer is you have to tie it to a Microsoft team. So if you're inside Microsoft Teams and you go to the Teams tab here, you need to make sure that you have created a team and you have added everyone to it that you would like inside of that schedule. So Right now I have Kaylee, myself, and Judy inside of this schedule, but you can add more people just by clicking here. Can you add somebody that is not in the team? The answer is no. The only people that you can add to a schedule for that specific team is people inside of that team. Now, guests um, do not play a role in this at all. Members have a specific view that they can only see their stuff, so they can't, um, you know, change the schedule or anything like that. They can only see um, what theirs is. Then you've got the um, admins or um, the um, owners is what they call it in teams, the owners of those teams. The owners can adjust, create, and edit schedules. Um, they can also export and import things. So. Make sure that that team is set up. If you don't know how to do that, I have videos underneath um, in the description that show you how to do that inside Microsoft Teams. Once all of that is created, you're gonna go into Shifts and you're gonna click on this little hamburger icon and click New Schedule. When you click New Schedule, it is going to ask um, the team that you would like to create that schedule under, okay? So I have already done this um, and then, um, like let's say I did this one, and then step two would be to do the time zone. This is very important because you're tracking time. So if you get that wrong, that's gonna be a bit of an issue, okay? Um, this is just um, your main schedule, so like your office, I guess. Um, some people might be remote though, so you're gonna have to uh, do with that whatever you uh, feel is best for, for your team. Okay, so I'm gonna close out of this because I've already created one for our Axiom team. Now, when you are in here, you have the option to create groups. I highly recommend this. It sections out the different people. Um, if, if they are a um, member inside of that team, I believe that they can see like their, um, their group and um, the schedules for their group. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have your admins and people maybe that you don't want them to see their schedules in a, in a separate group in a separate section, or if you really even want to, you can have separate teams for these people and have completely separate schedules for them. So completely up to you guys on how you wanna do that. Now, many people have been asking about this, um, how you create a shift and the different types of shifts there are. So I'm gonna show you how you create a shift. So let's say I was creating Kaylee's work week, right? There are um, different companies that do this different ways. So let's say you were um, a coffee 
um, a coffee company and you guys were using this to create a schedule for your team. So instead of everybody having the exact same schedule every week, um, every week is different, right? And you've got slots that you can fill with different people each week, okay? So that's gonna look different on your schedule than a nine to five business, okay? So how you would create the nine to five business schedule is you would right click on one of these boxes. So this I have tw the 20th um, on a Monday. I'm gonna click add shift. When I do this, I've got a couple options um, to change some things. I've got um, the color of the shift. You can do whatever you want with this really. You could change like, Maybe let's say uh, again with the coffee company, like, like let's say you had baristas and then you got um, people in the cash register or something like that. Well, you could change the color of that shift to represent the different positions. You can come up with that however you'd like. I can't do it for every business, but you, you guess. Um, so I, we normally do like our, our normal days blue. Okay, and so I'm going to do blue and then I've got myself in here. Okay, now here is where you would change it to open shift. I'm going to explain that later, but that would be like if you had, you know, different shifts, different weeks and different slots for the different people. Um, now this is a nine to five. So we've got the 530 p.m. to 830 a.m. Okay, that is actually wrong. It's opposite. <laughs> so we're going to change that. We're going to change this to 830 a.m. And then we're gonna change this to 5.30, not a.m., 5.30 p.m. Yes, perfect. Okay, so we've got nine hours here. You can also check if it's a 24 hour shift. Really hope none of your people are doing that. Um, then you've got custom labels. Now you can choose to have a label on your shift. So here's what it does. I'll show you an example. So let's say for this, I was gonna say training day. Okay, so this is a, a day that um, I just started in the company and I need a few days of training. So notice instead of saying the amount of allotted time I have on the day, it now just says um, this custom title instead. So that's what you show instead of time. It literally says it right there. So <laughs> show it instead of time. Then right here, you're gonna say the unpaid break. Why is this important? It's going to calculate how much you owe them, or, or sorry, how much you need to give them for paid time. So at the end, you're gonna export a Excel doc, okay, and I'll show you what that looks like. In that Excel doc, it breaks down um, how many hours you pay them and how many hours are unpaid, okay, for, for their breaks and whatnot. So it needs to help uh, calculate that by uh, using this. So normally we've got a one hour. So here I, I'm putting one hour in a cute little coffee cup. Then you can have any notes if you'd like. So if there's any important things they need to know. Okay. Then we've got daily um, activities. This is something if um, you wanted to break down the day. So for example, um, it has examples here, lunch, front counter. Okay, so if they're switching positions during this schedule, right? So let's say the whole day they're in this place, but then during the day they're switching to different positions. And you can actually set that up um, by creating this here. You can also set up a code. Why is this helpful? If you know Excel and you know how to like, you know, do Excel documents uh, very well and in a formatted beautiful way this will be quite helpful for you if you don't not super helpful um now you can also say if it's paid or not so that's super helpful again with it tracking how many paid hours they have in the day and how many non-paid so maybe let's say that in this training day they're only getting paid when they're on the clock doing whatever so like for us if they're training if they're watching videos they're not getting paid if they're getting, you know, taking tickets for clients and stuff, they are getting paid, right? That's not true, but let's say that it was, you could allocate that time here, okay? This is, I think, super helpful. So uh, make sure to play with this um, if you find it helpful for your business. Um, and then the other thing that you want to make sure of is when you're done with this, you can either choose to save or share. 
Share is going to immediately send this schedule to that person. Okay, so if you are creating a whole entire month schedule or a week schedule, do you want to share this schedule that you just made right now for this specific day? Probably not. So what you would want to do is just click save. Then it's going to save that. Now something that's cool is if you're a nine to five, like what I was explaining right now, your day is normally the same every day. So what you can do is you can copy this by right clicking and clicking copy. And then what you can do is paste it by right clicking and clicking paste. So you can just do this in every day. And just like that, you don't have to do every single day. Then if the next week is exactly the same, something that you can do that's really cool is you can hold down your left click and drag and then right click again and click copy then you're going to go to the next week go to monday through friday hold that down drag it right click paste boom you never have to do it again so if you are a nine to five and you're using that that is what i would suggest to do is that what we do yes it definitely is it makes it much easier um, then you can, you know, go back in let's say you have a holiday somewhere in there, right? So we have Thanksgiving coming up on the 23rd. Okay. So what I would do is I would just delete this. Okay. And get rid of it and add a, um, time off for Thanksgiving, which you can say is paid or not paid. Okay. So we've got that. That is how you do a shift. That is not an open shift. Then you've got open shifts. Open shifts are again what you're going to use if your day to day is different or if you have specific uh, slots inside of that shift. So here's what I mean. Right click and click add shift again, but instead of keeping this unchecked, you're gonna check it this time. It's gonna change. Now it's just not one person, it's called a slot because it doesn't have to do with a specific person. It is a slot that needs to be filled by any person that decides to either take it or you assign them to it. So let's say I had three slots open that are from 8.30 to 5.30 on whatever day you want, okay? so. Let's do uh, the 22nd, okay? And they get um, an hour break. And you can add the, you know, shift activities and whatnot here. And then you're going to click save. Something to note is that um, we don't have open shifts as an option for our company, so it's not going to show there. But normally it would show as an open shift. Um, and so what they would be able to do is, Either you'd be able to assign that person or they could assign themselves depending on how your company wants to do it. Um, and I've got another way that you can view this maybe more easily for yourself. Um, but when you go to share it, um, this option is share with your team. You can see how many open shifts you have versus um, versus the uh, closed shifts or just regular shifts, I guess. Um, but I, I won't be able to show you that just because we have it blocked on our on our company and we, we only do um, this regular shifts. So another thing to note is once you have completed this, again, you're going to, like I said previously, share with team. Um, so I'm gonna give an example of what that looks like here. Okay, so here I've created this schedule for Judy. Notice that there is a star next to all of these times. That is meaning that it is not sent yet. You can also see this bar at the bottom that says, five edits ready to share. Um, it will add it and tally it for you as well as say um, each of the columns of what they add up to if you have like 20 employees or whatnot. So when you go to click share with team, you can say what um, week you would like to send to them. So I, I'm on the week of the 20th to the 26th. What it's gonna say is the amount of uh, five assigned shifts. Then you've got zero open shift. This is, um, you know, the shifts that we made that are open shifts um, that other people could choose to um, to take a slot in that shift rather than you already assigning it to somebody. So once you have confirmed that this is good, you're going to share it. Um, previously, you could choose if you wanted to send it to the whole team or only the affected team members. They thankfully realized that 
you know, sharing it with the entire team makes no sense for anybody. And I don't know why anybody would want to do that. So they got rid of that option. And now you don't have to worry about pressing that. So when you click shared, it only sends it to the affected team members. So we are going to click share. And right now, Judy just got a notification saying that she has assigned shifts for this week. Great. So it also tallies up the amount of hours of work that they have for that week. Um, notice that both are at 40 because it is all 8.30 to 5.30. And it will obviously be different for those of you who have conflicting or different schedules each week. All right, now let's talk about the different views. So we've got week, day, month. When you click on day, it's going to look like this. Only reason why this would be helpful is if you added shift activities. So the things where you broke up each one of their days into different activities. This is helpful for people if they're changing things throughout the day. If they're a normal nine to five that does the same thing every day, this is not helpful for you and you'll probably never use this view. Um, so I don't use it. I personally only use the week view where I can see how I'm doing each week. Or you can also do the month view. This is going to look super scary if <laughs> if you have like 30 employees this is going to look like like a christmas tree um so uh why this is helpful is you can actually print this as a pdf in whichever way you'd like so something that could be helpful is if you have a monthly schedule that is going to be sent out to people you could view it as the month view click on this print option Click, uh, like, uh, the you could scale to print, which is an option. The print scaling, if you check this, you could choose um, what you want it to look like. I think that's honestly pretty cool. So if you do this, you could choose portrait or landscape. Then you can choose the kind of paper that you have. So I have this, so I'm going to keep it like that. And then you're going to choose print. Now, um, check your settings and print preview. Oh, yes. Okay. So you have to make sure that the settings are allowing you to print to PDF, which mine is. So I am going to go ahead and print. Then we've got this beautiful paper here and notice that um, it's got the entire month view. Now, if I went back, because the smart thing honestly would have been for me to click print scale to one page and do landscape because it's so long since it is a month. And then I go to click print. Okay, don't show this again. Okay, print. And then, oh, look how nice this is gonna be. Well. It would have been nice if you did a landscape. Let's do landscape. Okay, here we are. So then you've got all of these slots beautifully broken down. This was not previously there, I swear. If it was, I apologize. But when I did my last video, I don't remember seeing this where you could look at it in the preview like this. Instead, I only saw um, where you could export it as an Excel doc, which I'll show you how to do that as well. I find this very helpful for, um, you know, maybe people that have uh, like restaurants or like business, small businesses like that, that are hanging up the schedule for people to see. I thought that that might be helpful for them. Um, it also says, which is pretty cool here, it says what the different like colors are on call, you know, and stuff like that. So I think that's very helpful. Um, okay, so that's how you do the print. Then we're going to show you how to export or um, uh, import. So here you've got, when you click on the three dots at the top right of a schedule, you've got export or import. If you want to import an Excel doc that already has everything built out, you do have to make sure that it's right with the different features, which um, I'm not entirely sure what those are because I create it inside here, which I personally recommend you guys doing. I don't know why somebody would make it as an Excel doc then import it or import it into here but you do you so we've got export schedule which is what I want to do to be able to see um, the time for everybody so what you're gonna do and at least this is what I do every month is at the end of the month I go from the first to the 30th okay I'm gonna export in a format that can be imported I'm not gonna do that but you can do that then you're gonna have included, if you want to include shift notes, daily hours, okay? So that's like when you have the different like activities broken out and then time off. So I'm just gonna export it all just so that you can see it. Click export and boom, there it is in an Excel doc. I'm gonna pull it up. Okay, here it is pulled up. It actually looks Words cannot describe how much better this looks <laughs> 
compared to the first version of this. So I'm gonna enable editing to be able to um, do everything that I want in here. So I've got the whole schedule of our team here for the last month and it's got broken down um, on the different people and their positions here. Then what I've got is totals. When you go to totals, it actually breaks down the paid hours for each day. Then if you scroll all the way, oh, my head hurts doing this. If you scroll all the way to the end, you've got unpaid um, sick days. These are all categories that we created. So um, I'm gonna show you in just a second how to make time off categories. So they can add that category depending on whatever kind of time off they have, right? So if it's like a sick day or um, they've got a, a, a holiday maybe or something like that, uh, you can put a bonus time, okay? You just kind of make it however you'd like. This is very helpful. So you just go through and you see the uh, total amount of paid hours. Um, and you can just calculate it, boom, just like that. Super helpful, and you have it saved. Then you've also got the schedule view, so you can also use this to uh, go to as well. Next, I wanna show you guys the clock in and clock out. You notice this right here that says clock in, and you've got this down arrow. This is where you would clock into your shift and clock out, as well as start your break. Um, then you can also export a time sheet here. When you do that, um, it does a um, start and end just like before, but it looks a little bit different. So I'm going to show you what this one looks like. Maybe. Yes. Here we go. Okay. See here, you've got the um, time clock reports. So why is this different than the other one that we had? Um, the answer is it has clock in and clock out times as well as break start and break in times. This is the specific schedule. This is what the admin would use to see and make sure that people are doing the right thing each day. You've got the days here, okay? at the um, very left side, then you've got the clock in clock outs here, and then you've got the breaks here. Okay, so this is very important for those people who are like admins that wanna see it in a very detailed manner. Um, I, I personally like this view um, a lot, but I, I do see why both are helpful. Clock in and clock out, you can also do that on your phone, okay? So if your people are um, mobile and you allow them to use it on their devices, you can clock in and clock out as well as start your break and um, turn off your, br or clock back in from your break on your phone. Uh, so I do that a lot at my, um, at my desk. So I like that as well, um, that is an option. Then you've got copy schedule. Copy schedule is basically if your months and your weeks look the same, you can easily copy that and it will copy it for either some um, of the stuff or all of the stuff if you want. So you can do time off, activity, shift notes, open shifts, you can copy whatever you want. Then you can choose to copy specific groups at a time. So I could do the directors, the managers, and the Axiom engineers all together, or I could separate them. I'm gonna take this up here and I'm gonna say I wanna copy from this time to this time. Then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna say when I wanna copy this to. So if you have a full schedule of like 30 people or so, and you're trying to make a schedule for all of these people, maybe this would be more helpful than copy and pasting for you. Before we talk about requests, let's talk about settings because I get this question all the time. Okay. So these are the settings that you can change. You can change the time zone. You can change the schedule start week. So if your week starts on Tuesdays or your week starts on Sundays, whatever, you can change this. Then you can choose if you want to allow for copying shifts or not. You can choose to allow people to swap shifts. You can allow for open shifts. Notice how I said I couldn't show you because this was turned off. It's turned off here. I could turn it on right now. Offer shifts, you can allow people to offer their shifts to another employee. Time off requests, you can allow or deny uh, them access to even request off. These are your time um, time off reasons. So, you know, we've got our own reasons with our little custom cute things on next to them. You can add your own custom options, whatever you want. Then you've got time tracking and reporting. This is a big one. I've got a bunch of questions on this. Time clock comes with mobile clock in and clock out, exportable time reports, 
an optional location detection. Yes, it will detect if you're at the office and if you're not, so they know if you're lying or if you are. You can change these settings by clicking here. And you can choose to include location detection for the mobile app or not. Okay, so we have it turned off, so I'm not going to turn it on, but you do have the option for this. You can also export the time clock report for your team right here. So that's the same one that we saw when you clicked down on the clock in option. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about today are requests. This is where you would add requests and you can view other people's requests. Will everybody see this? No. If you are just a member, you are only going to see yours and you will not see anybody else's. If you're an owner of the team, you will see everybody's and you will be allowed to approve or deny requests off. Remember that when you are adding people as owners or members, do you or do you not want them to be allowed to approve or deny time off? So that is just up to you when creating a Microsoft team. So you're gonna click on new request. You're gonna to choose to either offer your shift, swap your shift, or do time off. We don't swap or offer, so we only use time off. You're gonna choose if it's an all day time off or if it's only a certain amount of your day, the start and end date, the reason. So again, these are the categories that I was referring to in these settings. So let's say it's my birthday. I'm gonna choose if I want to have notes to it or not and then send the request. It's gonna pop up here and it's going to notify the owners um, of that team that the request came in and they can either choose to approve, which looks like this, or deny, which looks like an X and a red X. So that is the options that you have here. All right, I lied, I have one more thing for you guys, these filters and views. Okay, filters and views are super helpful. You have a lot of different opportunities here. If you want to filter it between, you know, uh, different groups, like right now I'm only viewing uh, directors, but you can view all groups. You could also do certain members too. Um, then you've got views where you can view um, it by shift. So instead of viewing it by people, so the categories over here are people, you can view it by the different shifts you have. So you've got um, what amount of 8.30 to 5.30 shifts and what amount of training day shifts you have, okay? And so if you change if you change this title, it will break it out. So you just need to do that based on what you do want it to break out. Then you've also got the option to only view your shifts, which is pretty nice. So let's say I was here and I only wanted to see mine and didn't want to see anybody else's here. You can do it this way, go to week view, and then I only have my stuff so I'm not crowded with a bunch of other stuff on the board. Another thing that's very cool is when you go to export or um, print, the schedule, it's going to print it like how you have it like filtered. Um, okay, actually, so that's not fully true because when you go to export the timesheet, it's always gonna export everything. But when you go to uh, print for, um, for your schedule, it's only gonna print it the way that you're viewing it at the time. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So if I went to go print this right now, I would only see myself in the print. Um, but if I went to go look at a time sheet, time sheet and export the time sheet, I would see everybody even though my view is just me. Okay, so just remember that when you're trying to use that to your advantage. So you can choose to print certain groups at a time. That would be helpful. Uh, so you can use that however you'd like. I hope that this was helpful. I went a lot more in depth than I ever have in Microsoft Shifts. We enjoy it. Um, there are things that could obviously be better, um, could be more helpful for us, but we really do enjoy it as, um, as somebody or as a company who uses Microsoft Teams. So um, let me know in the comments if you have any more questions or concerns or if you think I got something wrong because I'm human and sometimes I mess up. Um, and if this is... Um, somebody watching it six months from now, um, some of this could totally be changed and different. So uh, take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.